Hey guys, welcome out to the range. As you guys could see from the intro video, accuracy is not a problem for a well-built, short-barreled rifle. Well-built being the key here. Um, I've been building AR-15s now for about 20 years, and I took a break probably the last eight months or so because things got ridiculous with the, the price tag skyrocketing, people buying, except it got to the point where there was so much junk that had entered the industry that when I tried to build stuff several months ago, I was having to send products back to the manufacturers that were sending them to me and telling them what was wrong with the product. And I mean stuff that just flat out wasn't fitting because people were rushing through production because they knew that 10 million, well then it was 8 million, but now it's about 10 million new gun owners had entered the industry and people don't know what they don't know. But then they run into people like me who absolutely know what they know. And I was able to identify the junk products which meant that they had to go right back and it really ticked me off because in some cases I had to eat shipping. What this is leading to is this. Recently I was able to, I, uh, someone asked me a question about um, a 10-3 and I went back in to the industry as it were and I started looking and I'm like, dude, the good stuff is back in stock. What, what happened? Well, what happened was I had stopped looking. And not only me, but a bunch of other people had stopped looking and the prices had kind of moved back down again and the high quality products were back in stock so now what does that mean well that means that now the 10.3 inch upper receiver that I've been asked for many times is now available for purchase on my shop and it is built with an aero precision upper receiver without the forward assist but with the ejection port cover because several people have asked about that I like this one. Um, as you guys know, I like the Anderson Manufacturing Upper Receivers, but those things have dropped off the market. I have no idea where they've gone. The Anderson Manufacturing weighs just a skosh less than this one does, but this one has the ejection port cover that people want. And look, if you're a lefty like I am, and you're wearing your gun against your body, which is kind of where it has to be as a lefty, the EPC is nice because it keeps junk off your shirt. That's something that I'd kind of learned to just deal with because it was what it was, and at the time, there was no option for ejection port cover, but no forward assist. It was either or. It was the full thing or nothing at all. So I'm kind of tickled pink with these. I really like them. Um, and they are a lot higher quality than the Andersons were because they're fit, the, the anodizing is, the only way I can put it is the anodizing is tighter and it's finished better. And it's just, it's a, you hear that? It's just slicker. It's a slicker finish. The uh, nickel bar and bolt carrier groups are mil-spec, and yes, they do come with the upper along with a mil-spec charging handle. The handguard is going to be a 10-inch MCMR. This is a KMR, but the handguard that you guys are going to get is the is the MCMR, which is M-lock. Why M-lock? Because more people want M-lock than KMR. KMR is kind of an acquired taste. I'm cool with that. So I bought 12 M-locks. By the way, guys, there are a dozen. I only have a dozen of these that I've purchased. Um, because I'm really tired of buying a bunch of stuff and then getting stuck with it so I'm doing things 12 at a time now so there are only 12 and I know that right now someone left this video and went to go buy one but anyways uh, 10 inch MCMR handguard from BCM the flash can that I'm using is going to be a KK Industries micro flash can which guys is a really nice flash can it's a very good approximation of my comp and uh, the, the KK Industries actually has a built-in heat sink just like mine does, so you get the best of both worlds. Because this one, when it was up for sale, these were three times the cost of the ones from KK Industries, so duh. It's, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Uh, in closing, I'll tell you this. People have asked me, well, why don't you build more uppers? Well, when I lay down the cost of materials and the cost of production and the cost of shipping, it costs me more to make upper receivers than it does to make slings. Why am I still doing the occasional upper? Because people keep asking for high quality builds. And guys, I'm going to be blunt with you. The one question that I keep getting addressed is, or I'm sorry, the one question that I keep getting is, I have a Springfield Armory Saint and it won't run and this is what it's doing. Guys, the Saint is the rifle uh, rifle or AR-15 pistol that I've heard from or that I've heard about the most. There's something wrong with those guns. Notice I'm not tippy-toeing and worrying about offending anyone. The fact of the matter is manufacturers are putting up production because they know that the end user, there's so many new end users that they don't know what they don't know, which is why I'm doing this video, which is why I'm selling these uppers. 
and I would highly, highly suggest that you pay very close attention to the buffers that I have listed there in the listing for the uppers because, guys, you can't just buy the upper and ignore the suggestion of the buffer. I'm in love. The buffer is a very key component. If your buffer does not have enough mass to keep the gun locked in, in battery, then when you pull that trigger and that thing cycles, it's going to cycle so violently that you're going to start having malfunctions because you're not slowing the gun down like it should be slowed down. So what I'm saying to you is pay very close attention to the buffer suggestions that I've put in there. Guys, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. I'm not suggesting crazy expensive parts for you. I'm telling you, really high quality, inexpensive parts that you can get that are not going to break the bank, but are going to ensure that your gun runs as good as my gun does. And as you guys saw in the intro video, accuracy is not a problem for a 10.3. Frankly, accuracy is not even a problem for a 7.5 if it's been built properly. And everything that I build is built properly. If you guys have any questions or concerns, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. As always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one.